Today's lesson is a part of Unit 1, Scientific Skills. Uh, the topic is going to be dimensional analysis. This video is due on Friday, September 6th. Um, this means that you should take notes on this video, have them ready for the beginning of class, uh, since there will be an open note quiz. This means the better quality notes you take, the better you will do on the quiz. Dimensional analysis uh, first requires us to understand fractions. So we're going to start with some fraction terminology, which also means vocabulary. There are two parts to a fraction, um, the numerator, which is on the top, and the denominator, which is on the bottom. The way in which I always remember this, think denominator, denominator starts with D, just like down starts with a D. So you want to think that your denominator is going to be on the bottom. All right. The denominator tells us how many pieces we're going to split a whole into, and the numerator tells us how many of those pieces we want. So for example, let's imagine this is a whole or one. What I'm going to do, I'm going to split this into three different pieces from my denominator, and then I want two of them. That's what my numerator tells me, so I'm going to go ahead and pick two of these. Our numerators and our denominators can be different numbers. If the numerator is less than, the symbol means less than, um, our denominator, this is called what a this is called a proper fraction. Um, a proper fraction is always less than one. So for example, if I divide, um, so let's look at this one. If I divide a whole into five pieces, so let's say this is a whole right here, or one, I'm going to divide this into five pieces. Right? And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take four of those pieces. Right? So I'm taking four-fifths of a whole, and this is going to end up being less than one, because one would have been all of these pieces. If our numerator is actually equal to our denominator, as we can see here, um, this fraction is going to equal one. This is very important because anything divided by itself is always one. So, for example, 5 fifths, 7 fifths, and 16 sixteenths are all equal to 1. So these are actually all equal to each other, equal to 1. Uh, for example, again, if I divide a whole into 5 pieces, so here's my whole, otherwise known as 1. Let me write whole. All right. Um, and I take all 5 pieces. We can see I'm going to end up with a whole or with 1. All right. If our numerator is actually larger than our denominator, the symbol means larger than, this is what is called an improper fraction. Um, an improper fraction is always larger than one. Uh, so for example, again, if I take this one right here, and I divide my whole or my one into five pieces, so here's one, um, and I go ahead and I start filling these in, so here's my first one, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, I realize, oh no, I've run out of room. So I actually need to draw another hole. All right. So this is actually going to be our second one. And so I'm on my fifth, I add sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. So we can see nine fifths is actually just a little less than two. All right, now that we understand a little bit about fractions, we need to talk about how to multiply fractions. When we multiply fractions, we want to multiply all of our numerators together. And we want to multiply all of our denominators together. Uh, just a reminder that, for example here, when we have a whole number 4, this is the same as saying 4 over 1 in fraction form. Because 4 divided by 1 just equals 4. All right. So when I go ahead and I multiply these out, what I'm going to end up with, on the top I'll have 3 times 7 times 4. And on the bottom I'm going to have 8 times 6 times 1. So on top we actually end up with... Um, this equals 21 times 4, so this is going to be 84. All over, and on the bottom, 8 times 6 is going to equal 48. I can go ahead and then reduce this number. So 84 and 48 are both divisible by 2, which would give me um, 42 all over 24. And these are both divisible by 2, and so that would give me 21 over 12. And 21 and 12 are both divisible by 3. So this would give me um, 7 over 4. All right? 7 fourths, remember if we look up here, let's say we have 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, I can go ahead and fill these in. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4. And then 1, 2, 
three. So this is the same um, if we have seven pieces out of the eight. This is going to be the same as saying one and three fourths. All right, so that's going to be our final answer. When we multiply um, fractions, there's often a really cool trick um, in which we can cancel out like terms. Um, so like terms means that if we find two things that are the same, we can actually cancel them out um, because they actually equal one. So for example, two divided by two, again, equals one. So in the same way here, if I'm looking at two times seven times five, multiplying all my numerators together on the bottom, I'm going to multiply my denominators, so five times two times three. I can actually divide out here, sorry, we can see right here, I can actually divide about 2 and 2, because 2 divided by 2 equals 1, and I can also divide out 5 and 5, because 5 divided by 5 equals 1. So my final fraction ends up actually being 7 thirds. Um, so if we look again, here are my pieces, right here, so I'm going to go ahead and fill in 7 of these, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this actually ends up being 1, 2, um, and 1 third. So this is going to end up being 2 and 1 third is my answer. Now that we understand fractions, we can actually talk about dimensional analysis. And dimensional analysis is when we look at uh, the units um, to determine different forms of a measurement. So you already know how to do this. It's actually pretty simple. So let's imagine we have three circles and a triangle. We have two triangles and a heart. And I want to know how many circles there are in three hearts. So I'm going to start off with my three hearts because this is what I'm looking for, right? All right, and here's my second heart, and here's my third heart. All right. I already know that in each heart there's going to be two triangles. So I can go ahead and draw two triangles, kind of look like faces. All right. And then in each of my triangles I can draw three circles. So one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So in total, I'm going to end up with 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I should end up with 18 uh, circles in three hearts. Now, there's actually a much easier way to do this. So the way in which we do this is we want to think about um, what are called conversion factors. So both of these right here are conversion factors. For every three circles, we have one triangle. For every two triangles, we have one heart. All right. These two can actually be written in fraction form, All right, which is why it's super important for us to understand fractions. So I can actually write this in two forms. Um, I can write three circles for every one triangle, or I can write one triangle for every three circles. All right. I, for my other one, I can go ahead and I can do two triangles um, for every one heart, or I can do um, one heart for every two triangles. Now that I have those actual conversion factors, what I can do is I can do what is called dimensional analysis. So what I want to do is I want to put what I start with. So I start with my three hearts. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and make what looks like a picket fence. Right? Um, and this is actually just multiplying fractions together. So imagine that this is a fraction through three hearts. Right? Um, I want to find my uh, conversion factor that includes hearts. So here I had two options. I could say two triangles over one heart, or I could say one heart over two triangles. I want to actually be able to cancel out my hearts, so I'm going to want hearts on the bottom because it's on the top over here, so I can cancel it out if it's on the bottom over here. So the one that uses hearts on the bottom is this one right here, so I can say one heart on the bottom, two triangles on the top. Okay. Next, what I want to do, I want to use my other conversion. So I know I could have three circles over one triangle, or I could have one triangle for every three circles. Again. If I have triangles on top, I'm going to want triangles on bottom over here so that they can cancel out. All right? So I'm going to go ahead and use this conversion factor right here, three circles over one triangle. So three circles over one triangle. Now we can look back. Our triangles actually cancel out. When I set this equal to each other, I'm going to multiply the top together. So I know three times two times three. And on the bottom, I'm going to do one times one. 
And I know that my units should be circles, because this is what I'm actually left over with. So 3 times 2 times 3 is going to equal 18, all right? All over 1, which is 1, and I'm going to end up with 18 circles, which is exactly what I found out when I drew it up. All right, so that is the end of today's lesson. Um, we start. We did very, very basic um, stuff with dimensional analysis, as well as you learned some fraction terminology. Make sure that you took good notes and that you are ready for the quiz on Friday. See you then.